The situation that Barcelona is in right now is maybe the most unpredictable in their club's history. On the 7th of March 2021, it was announced that Joan Laporta had been elected as the president for Barcelona for the second term. Now we can all hope that there will be a few changes as the newly elected president takes charge of the team. So in today's video, we'll talk about those changes in detail. Now at the time of making the video, Barcelona is only 2 points behind of the league leaders Atletico Madrid with one game in hand. So there is a certain possibility that Barcelona could win the league this time. But the problem with the Barcelona squad won't just go away even if they win the league. So at the start of this season, the average age of Barcelona squad was 25.33 years. It was the lowest of the last 10 years. This happened because there were young talents in the squad like Ansu Fati, Ricky Puj, Pedri, etc. So the question arises, if they have young talents like them, and they have arguably the best player in the world, Lionel Messi, so why aren't they winning the UCL? Now we have to consider the fact that Messi is 33 now, and Barcelona can't depend just on him as they used to throughout the whole season. Although he is still the main man and the source of all creativity in the team. And the sad part is, Messi might leave Barcelona at the end of this season. But there's still some hope for the Barcelona supporters, as Laporta's presidential campaign's main point was to extend the contact and keep Messi in any way possible. Now let's talk about the team as a whole. As of now, there are 8 players from La Masia who we could consider as the first team players for Barcelona. This list includes Pique, Mingueza, Sergi Roberto, Jordi Alba, Sergio Busquets, Messi, Ricky Puj, and Ansu Fati. Now, four of those eight players are more than 30 years old, and Sergi Roberto is 29. So, this brings us to our first point the La Masia. The infamous La Masia produced some legends that glorified the footballing history. But the harsh truth is, the academy didn't produce the same caliber of players it used to, at least in the recent past. And in order to save Barcelona from their 1 billion debt, they need their homegrown talents. It was back in 2003 that Laporta was able to call on homegrown youngsters such as Andres Iniesta, Victor Valdez, Xavi, Carlos Puyol to launch his presidency. Now they need the same caliber of players to revamp the Barcelona squad. Now the reports suggest that Laporta's first action to improve the academy would be removing Patrick Clivert from his role as academy director at the end of this season. Clivert returned to Nou Camp after 15 years being away in 2019. But his spell as an academy director is said to be short-lived. Clivert will be replaced by another former Barcelona player, Jose Ramon Alexanco. Alexanco signed for Barcelona in 1980. With him as a captain, Barcelona formed the backbone of the legendary dream team which won four consecutive league championships. On 7th of January 2017, he became the director of football at Valencia. This shows that he has some experience in his job role. Former La Masia prodigies like Messi, Busquets, Alaba, Piquet are still the backbone of the team even at this age. But the next generation Barcelona squad needs some new faces and some serious talent to hold their stature even after Messi's departure. And revamping the academy is must for that. When Messi would leave Barcelona, it would be an end of an era. But the loss would be very fatal for the Barcelona squad. Because even at the age of 33, Messi is not only the top scorer of Barcelona only, he is also the top scorer of the La Liga itself. This is the reason that there is a dark cloud surges over the Camp Nou as the following summer, Lionel Messi did everything in his power to orchestrate a move away from Barcelona. If Messi really leaves Barcelona, then the hole from that departure would be hard to fill, as Messi has been the heart and soul of the team for a long time now. And any team in the world would suffer if arguably the best player in the history of football leaves the team. Another important thing is that those La Masia youngsters in mid-2000s had a genius Brazilian called Ronaldinho in their squad. The flamboyant playmaker made the team play in a certain way 
that gave the youngsters in the team a blank canvas in which they express themselves. We hope that Laporta will remember that and will understand the importance of another influential number 10 in their squad. Now Barcelona already has the perfect fit for the number 10 role in the form of Lionel Messi. Barca will obviously try their best to keep their best player ever. Or they could also let him go and use the eye-watering wages to bring in someone new to fill the Ronaldinho role. Depending on the current financial situation, Laporta's first part of the job would be to sit down with his team and assess how bad the situation behind the scene is. The striking indication of how Laporta sees the financial future of the club is that he didn't even promise a marquee signing in his election manifesto, which does differ from his campaign strategy in 2003 and 2015. In 2003, Laporta promised to sign David Beckham from Manchester United. And in 2015, during his failed campaign, Laporta vowed to sign Paul Pogba from Juventus. But now, Barcelona being on the verge of financial ruin, there can be no such promises. In fact, Laporta's election win was built on him calling out his rivals irresponsible for planning to try and sign Kylian Mbappe or Erling Haaland whilst offering no solution to pay back over a billion euro worth of looming debt. So instead, Joan Laporta has insisted that the club will rely on the famous Academy of La Masia rather than the checkbook for their next batch of superstars. One could easily say that Laporta is once again in the right place at the right time as the La Masia is in dire need of a full-on revamp. It was back in 2003 that Laporta was able to call on homegrown youngsters such as Andres Iniesta, Victor Valdez, Xavi and Carlos Puyol to launch his presidency. And this time around, the Barca fans are hoping for a similar thing to happen. Lastly, we also have to mention the elephant in the room, which is the European Super League. We know that talks have started and ended pretty fast about the ESL, but we have to keep in mind that Laporta laid Barcelona as one of the 12 clubs that tried to start the questionable competition. And if the ESL would have succeeded, Barcelona's financial structure would have been in an improved position. There's a lot of reason the teams like Barcelona and Real Madrid tried to enter the ESL, which we have talked about in another video in very depth. So if you guys want, you can check that video also. So anyway, everything we have discussed till now sounds a lot easier when we just talk about it. But the terrifying reality is that one false step from Juan Laporta could bring the whole Barcelona empire down. Such the dicey state of their finance is. The Barcelona supporters have chosen their man to lead them through this critical situation. So we can end the video by revisiting a famous Catalan saying, better the crazy we know than the wise stranger. So that's all for today. If any of you is watching this video till now, we wanna say thanks for watching. If you guys have any kind of constructive criticism about our videos, we would be more than happy to hear it from you guys. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. You can subscribe also. Thanks for watching and have a great day.